All right, it's been a while since we've done one of these. And the pile is getting pretty big. So uh, if you're new to the channel, new to the things, basically uh, just some of the stuff I order or get in myself or whatever, and I just don't get a chance to do like full integrated videos of them because just busy doing other things in life. I just go through some of this stuff and then see what your comments are. If you want to see some further integration of something that are whatever using these in a project, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Now, of course, a lot of these products, some of them may not be out, some of them may be out. I'll leave all the links down below. Some of them may be affiliate links, but there's no additional cost to you. I do appreciate. And we're going to get on with the things. And no really particular order, as always, because I don't go by the rules. So Shelly's really been getting into the whole different protocol game. I mean, they do have like the matter over Wi-Fi stuff. They even did Zigbee on the Gen 4 things. Well, they're doing all the things in the whole Z-Wave world as well. And the cool thing is, is if you look here closely, if I have my pointer, is Z-Wave LR. It'll say Z-Wave plus LR, which is gonna be that long range. And one thing I was really excited to see was the actual one, of course, that I have open. And it's their little motion sensor. It's a small little motion sensor. Now, the cool thing about it is with Home Assistant is the newer version allows you to pair up with LR, which is long range, is not mesh. It's going to be from the coordinator over to the actual device. They claim, not Home Assistant, but the Z-Wave Alliance deal claims like this crazy quarter or half mile deal with actual Z-Wave LR. So I'm really curious to see how far I can get that for the whole Z-Wave LR stuff. And it looks like Doug has sent me the whole suite of things here. Um, down to the one I really loved, we've seen this in other models, was this is the Relayless power monitoring, which is cool. You put it behind the fridge, refrigerator, whatever dishwasher, whatever it may be, you don't really need to cut off and you don't want to, you know, put a relay on those, but you want to do the power monitoring. This is it with 16 amp. And again, it's still 16 amp. Um, then they even have the zero to 10 dimmer. Um, all the different modules that you're used to seeing on the Shelly side, except for what I was curious to see was also in their little motion sensor. Oh, and I guess the one I didn't open is, this is the temperature and humidity sensor that we've seen before, but it's in the Z-Wave model as well. You do get the little QR code inside, and basically you just, the Home Assistant has made this stupid easy. You don't have to go into Z-Wave JS UI or whatever they calling it nowadays. You just scan and add device for Z-Wave, a device actually in Home Assistant itself, and then it pre pairs up, power it up, boom, it's done. You don't have to jump over to another add-on or Docker container thing. Just adds all right in a home assistant the way it should be. So we're gonna do some other stuff. Maybe we'll do some things with Z-Wave LR. Um, I do have a current coordinator for Z-Wave LR been playing with and uh, had, Actually, I haven't had issues like I had with previous just regular Z-Wave in my area. So I'm kind of curious to see how that works. They did also send this interesting little device here. It's called their development board with terminals. So let's open this thing up. And basically to develop, I guess, different boards on the Shelly platform. I think this is... The let's see, oh, Shelly X mod H, H6. I guess that's their C6 module. Not really sure on that one. It looks like kind of the expressive model, but um, I don't know. We'll play around with that a little more on this board and see exactly what this exact model is. Very interesting to see. I'm gonna see if I can power this thing up, and um, that's pretty neat. Nothing else really on the back. So I guess staying in line with different modules and things, the cool stuff. I know we've had circuit setup stuff and way we are way zoomed in. 
And if you remember, we did like the original like two channel power monitoring and then he's got the, the 6, 12, 32. I still use his power monitoring to the day, till this day and it works awesome. Um, but he come out with something else. Using the, it's this cool little case I thought was neat. Using the open source I know they had that rat GDO thing, but then I remember connected came out with a different library that was even better Then they open sourced it. Well, now he's brought it into ESP home and has this custom little module. And I do have one installed because I have two garage doors that have, you know, like that learning button. It's not the old school, just relay. And yeah, that's, you can't do like simple like relay modules to push the button. Well, the cool thing is, and I'll show some of the stats on the screen, this actually just pairs up and you can have an actual percentage to open the garage doors. So for instance, if I want to open the garage doors, just I have an automation for Ms. Blur to open up both garage doors to 15%, let it breeze through the carport area that's now closed in. Pretty awesome stuff. She didn't have to sit there and try to toggle the buttons. So I thought it was interesting. He has this white part on here, but that's actually for, I thought it was a sticker at first. It's for an LED and it's really simple to hook up. I didn't use any of these terminals and I just really, you, all you do is you power it with USB-C and then put the red and white and I'll put a picture he sent me of the back because I think he has it screwed in here. Um, and then you just plug it into the door and turn it, the door opener and turn everything on. It paired right up and boom, I cycled the door up and down one time with the actual button on the wall and it worked perfectly. It was a pretty stupid, simple installation. Now he does have ESP Home loaded on these for you automatically, but you can take them over and do your own thing. I guess if you want to do like Bluetooth proxy from them as well. Um, I didn't do that. Um, he has temperature, humidity on here. It looks like a potentially a buzzer on there as well. And um, yeah. Pretty cool stuff with this. It is the ESP32-S3, I believe. Yeah, ESP32-S3. So definitely he did not choose a um, ESP8266 like some other garage door manufacturers decided to do with their little modules, or I guess you would say the aftermarket modules. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I'll be doing an integration deal with this one to show how I set everything up. Really awesome to glad to see circuit set up getting into those. And I was pretty, thank you for sending that. Definitely changes things with the way I do my garage doors now. Um, if you saw the chicken video, well, this one is the Temp Pro 1. And it is powered up right now through USB-C. I do have the Wi-Fi firmware on it, and but they do have power over Ethernet. And there are two jacks here. It looks like a headphone 3.5 millimeter. I'm just using the one sensor that they sent me on this. We're using it for to hatch the chickens. This one's, I think, a SHT20. It's perfect for dangling inside the little chicken thing. It doesn't get messy whenever during hatching time. So, but it comes in this cool case. It has this little block that you can slide off. Of course, that you can mount that. Um, and inside, there's all kind of goodies for PoE. I believe this is the ESP32. That's also the ESP32 S3. I was about to speak wrong and thinking it was the C3, but they have put the S3 on it. Glad to see that moving forward. It's just basically a more chip, uh, just the updated chip from the C3 it has more processing power, memory, RAM, etc. So this is power over Ethernet. You do have Wi-Fi options. This would be great for if you want to do Bluetooth proxy over Ethernet, get off your Wi-Fi because you're repeating all that 2.4 gigahertz over 2.4 gigahertz again. Yes, you can have too many Bluetooth Wi-Fi proxies, but this kind of corrects that if you want to do power over Ethernet. Maybe you can even throw this in a network cabinet and just say, hey, I want to see the temperature of all my network equipment and then Bluetooth proxy in there. Simple little thing. Um, glad to see that they did this in a PoE option.
And of course, since it is ESP Home, you can take it over and do whatever sensors and stuff you want to do based on the hardware that's shown here. That comes from Apollo Automation and so does this. We may have to turn the camera lights down for this one. Thought this was pretty damn slick. Let me steal the USB. And basically what this is, is, well, let's just fire it, fire it up. It does not have ESP Home on it. It actually has, and it's going to drive the camera crazy, apparently. Sorry for that. I don't know if it's going to drive this camera crazy, but it is kind of an orange-red color. We're going to see if... Um... So, basically, it's an LED matrix panel with an ESP32 module straight on the back. They do have WLED or WLED, however you want to say that already pre-flashed on it and you can see you get all the fun audio stuff right built into the thing um i didn't flash this i really didn't even add it to my wi-fi yet um i just have it just using the access point mode i want to see how well it worked and it's not too bad it's pretty bright and everything i'm sorry that it is flickering it actually does not flicker to the eye it's just the camera being able to see that um so if you can see if we can turn this light out maybe that'll be a little bit better yeah so this one actually doesn't flicker when we're talking here um using the desk camera with the light off and yeah there's several different ones that are built into wled so there's all kind of little cool little things. Um, again, this is all going to be open source. Um, so you can do and put your own thing on there with WLED, all your different graphics, whatever you want to do. Potentially, I want to look at, I can put my logo or something like that. Um, I don't know if you can connect multiple of these together. I'll see if I can look on their page and see um, what Justin and them say. But uh, that would be pretty slick to build multiple of these matrix panels out. So Apollo did build their little custom little module that snaps right on the back of this panel. Pretty cool stuff there. Makes it stupid simple for someone wanting to do a little LED matrix panel in the house. So there, if you've seen a few videos out there, and I've done a couple, one of still one of my favorites is the SM Light or SM Light Tech uh zigbee coordinators this is zigbee coordinator this is um, cool and stuff and this one definitely is cool and stuff but there's a new model out and i don't know if i am totally sold on it yet um so this one is basically inside there's an esp32 and then there's a zigbee chipset whether that be the efr flavor or the cc2652 flavor well, then Thread came along, and Thread's still kind of a mess. Um, but then they thought, hey, let's just make a dual one of... No, it's not the Shocker. It's basically there is an ESP32 inside, and then there are two Zigbee chipsets. There's the CC2652, and then there's the EFR. So you could run two Zigbee networks off of both of these, or you could run like Matt, you know, thread, you know, Matt, thread. Yeah, it could be three. You could run thread on the second one. You could do any type of coordinator. You can mix and match. They do have the same cool GUI to change all that. But I did see in the documentation they still recommend for thread of actually using the USB. It, I did play around with it. it does work um, with the PoE with over for thread. But then you get into a whole thing. Thread's just kind of not there for me yet. Um, and then, do I want Thread and Zigbee on the same exact coordinator? I remember they even tried to do it with the dual stack, and then it would switch back and forth. I like to keep my things separate. So, especially for this, I, I wouldn't want a Z-Wave and a you know Zigbee adapter having on the same exact thing because... If something hangs up for some reason, or I gotta change something, unplug or whatever, then I'm shutting down two networks at once. Um, I'm not that space limited on my network to have two of these. 
or just one USB and then one PoE. So I'm not sure this is really for me just yet. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but um, I like to kind of, I was never a fan back in the day of the VCR TV combos, but uh, I guess that's dating myself there. Or, um, and there was a fan of the cable modem Wi-Fi router things. I liked all my stuff separate. And I still want Zigbee and Thread and Z-Wave all separate. So, um, I don't know. We'll do some more stuff with Thread maybe when it gets a little better. So, jumping into Zigbee. Um, I'm probably going to screw up the name on this. Um, is Naus. They sent some cool little Zigbee plugs. Nothing else to them, really. They do pair it with Zigbee to MQTT, no issue. There's, I did like the small little size of these compared to some other plugs that I've played with out there. Um, it's just pretty stupid small on these. So they are still 15 amp, but I guess one thing of these, they would fit probably like in a small weatherproof box a lot easier than like some of the larger Zigbee plugs. This is a Sonoff one, and it's a pretty standard size. You can see the difference in, there's a way different ones of, you know, the length or on the width, I guess you would say. But, um, yeah, I've played around with some of these in the Wi-Fi aspect, and I really liked it for, like, using them outside in some weatherproof boxes. So that'd be a good idea, um, I guess. But don't take my advice on that, because they probably say these aren't outside rated. But, um, yeah, you can, that was in theory. So, um, nothing else really with those. They are Zigbee repeaters as well, since they are mains powered. Um, they do have power monitoring on them. They are 15 amp for the U.S. market. Um, so, pretty cool. Thanks for sending those. I'm sure we'll get to use a use for doing the Zigbee plugs. So, st sticking with Zigbee um, Sonoff has come out with a cool couple of little different um, Zigbee looking, or I guess they are Zigbee, not just looking. They are Zigbee with a display. And let's zoom in a little bit here. This one is a magnet based on the back and it does have a very large coin cell. It's a CR2477. And then it has the magnet actually in the back. So like you can stick it to the refrigerator or something else, you know, outside like a metal post or perfect for that. And um, it even has a little thing for a strap. But one thing I don't understand, why a decimal point on the humidity? Is it really going to make a difference if it's 74.7% humidity or 74.2% humidity? It really throws me off of the having the decimal, I think it's 647% humidity. So I wish they would do away with the whole decimal point. I do get the decimal point, especially on Celsius when you're doing temperature. So I kind of understand that for the temperature, but not for humidity. These are IP65 for, you know, the weatherproof stuff. And they do have another model, which would be great probably for like a pool or something like that. You probably won't use the display much, but it has, a wired sensor and no it does not unplug like you would see on some others it is just like a little Dallas waterproof sensor and you can drop it into things so it's the kind of the same exact design except the sensor is remote in a way minus 40 Celsius to 115 Celsius it's a pretty decent range there staying in the whole thing of doing Zigbee things this actually is Zigbee or Thread, and you just basically, you do need to use their app where you pair it the first time, and it, what it does, it actually sends the firmware over if you want Zigbee or you want Thread via Bluetooth from your cell phone. You don't have to pair it up with the cloud or anything because Zigbee and Thread are local by nature. You're just changing the firmware with it, so you don't have to get all geeky and flash it. So this is like their little climate sensor and it is like this has this base thing, got that base. And then you can push buttons on it and change, like if you want to have a different thermostat and everything. Um, I'm not exactly kind of sold on this. I guess if you change your thermostat a lot from around the other side of the house, maybe that would be beneficial. But um, I would just kind of like it for its, and it I guess looks like two coin cells. 
is just having a nice display of the temperature and everything. And um, there's not a whole lot else to this thing that I've found. It's just a climate sensor with controls.